So with one episode left to go in Tower of a God, Rachel shows Bam her true colors. And while she's already shown her true colors to Bam when she first abandoned him, Bam was still very much ignorant. He was ignorant to the world. He wanted to be the type of character that brings together everyone with friendship and love and would ascend to the top of the tower with nothing but compassion in his heart. But everything that we've learned about the world of Tower of God and just the idea of those who reach the top, it's not people who hold each other's hands, but those who stab others in the back to get there. And to have her at the end of this episode shove Bam aside, forcing him to seemingly fail, if not could kill him depending on where he lands, also she could get to the tower by herself, because clearly she believes Bam is a hindrance, a liability, something that is going to make her feel bad for doing things to ascend to the top of the tower. The fact that she did that is not only great for the narrative because it's now going to force Bam out of his shell of being super friendly, or so you would hope because logically I don't see how you could write his narrative, his character arc to not change after this moment. Because this isn't a simple betrayal of you left me alone and afraid in a cave. This is I saved your ass, I got you to the top of the tower, or giving you the opportunity to ascend to the top of the tower, and you shove me aside after almost giving my life for you. This logically has to change his character, and you have to appreciate her addition to this story, while people will get mad at her at a personal level, because yes, at a personal level, she's not someone you want to associate yourself with, but as Tower of God has explained, these are the type of characters who make it to the top, and that's why characters like Bam you want to eliminate because they haven't had the hardships that everyone else had and doing so can change a lot of the people from saying oh we have to be vicious and stab you in the back to maybe we can be friends and climb it together. You need a character that shakes up not only the story as a whole but your main character's focus and I can go to something airing in this season while not everyone watching Tower of God may watch Fruits Basket but characters like Octo, which is the main antagonist in Fruits Basket you hate them at a personal level, but you're so thankful they're a part of the show because without them, characters like Toru, or in the case of Tower of God, Bam, you wouldn't have them be shaken up and have to evolve along the way. They could just stay ignorant and basically be bubbly and fun the entire way through. Rachel's entire character is so fascinating to me and is one of the most fascinating additions to this show because I don't know what she's thinking 100% of the time, but at the same time, Based on what we know about Tower of God, it kind of seems to me like she doesn't hate Bam. There's been moments where she truly embraced Bam and she probably does care for him, but for whatever reason, reaching the top of the tower means more to her than Bam's existence. And most likely, based on a lot of Bam's kind of dialogue, it's very sappy. It's like, hey, I made friends, I can do this, I can help you. It's very much anti-tower. That's probably the best way to put it. And based on her reactions, which she hasn't said a lot, but the way the anime has gone with directing her scenes, there's moments where you think she's going to shove him or stab him, but then doesn't. There's moments where you can see genuine companionship and compassion from her. But at the same time, if you take into consideration what the tower represents, could you really travel up a tower and be vicious to basically reach the top unless you remove any liabilities, which even though Bam is the reason she beat this test, at the same time, you can see from her point of view is she's only focusing on climbing the tower, why she would do something so evil and horrible because that's what the tower demands. For you to be powerful and to remove any shackles holding you down, even if that shackle is a reason you got to even take the test and pass it to begin with. Bam's a powerful character, I doubt he's going out right now and here. I, I think he's going to live, but I think he's going to be a very different person going forward in the second season. He's powerful in itself that he has this insane ability that he can blast a monster inside out and survive after almost being eaten how many times. But at the same time, emotionally, I don't think he is all that strong. And now he's going to have a very rude awakening and who knows what that's going to look like and what it's going to look like for his teammates that were relying on him in terms of passing. Do they get to climb up or do they have to now wait? It just is so interesting to see what's happening. Does Bam technically get the pass or is he going to fail because he didn't reach the top in terms of the platform? Like there is so much that is happening here and it is such a wide variety of emotions because watching this episode and you can go back a couple of reviews. I said I firmly believe Rachel is going to betray Bam again and in this episode I actually thought she was going to. There was a couple of moments where I was like this is looking shady 
Is she going to stab her boy? Is she faking everything here? And then, because they had the Yuri content, my guard got let down. That is so important because people were hyping the shit out of this episode. And if Yuri wasn't in this episode, I would know exactly what was about to happen, that she was going to betray Bam. But because Yuri was such a dominating force, I thought that's what people were excited for because she is a total badass. She was literally yawning as taking out something that was wiping our girls and just making it look like it was so easy. She is a total boss and the fact that she came to collect her swords to see her boy, see how he's doing and oh yeah, he's climbing the tower, he's doing pretty good. I guess I'll leave you be. It looked like a cakewalk and just everything going on with the test administrator and just the fact that they couldn't actually attack this person and if they did it would be a failure. So then you get a giant hammer bro coming in to squash them Goomba style from Mario and I'm thinking to myself I understand why people are excited because this is badass. It's well animated. I can tell people were really excited for the fight which they obviously were but the idea of Rachel's betrayal I thought if anything would be next episode. I thought there would be a stabbing or something, you know, like they're going through a door, they're entering the next level, and then she stabs him. I thought that was going to be the thing that triggered so many people with Rachel. But the fact that it came in such a way that, on one hand, I was like, okay, is something going to happen here? But I was like, no, it can't happen here. Like, if anything, it was going to happen earlier. But to see the shove and her standing up, I was thinking to myself, obviously this pisses me off, but thank you for having Rachel in this show. And I know some people are going to get triggered by that remark, but you can't have a show without a good antagonist. You need an antagonist that's equally memorable as your protagonist, and there is no way that you could keep Bam the way he was unless you wanted it to feel generic. And there's so much about this show that isn't generic, and the only thing that you could possibly compare to a lot of run-of-the-mill shonens and battle shonens, things like that, is that Bam wants to be friends with everyone and that he wants to smile and not hurt anyone. You need a rude awakening if you're going to tell us that this tower is very corrupt and ruins people's minds, and they absolutely delivered. And yes, I am thankful Rachel's in this show. Do I like Rachel at a personal level? No, I've never liked Rachel at a personal level, but I've always been intrigued by her, and I'm even more intrigued now because what just happened is going to shape her boy into something we can't even possibly predict. Or at least that's what you hope is going to happen, and I'm sure it will. There was a lot of great content outside of that amazing cliffhanger. We're going from 0 to 100 last week, 0 to 1,000 this week. I don't know how it's going to end with episode 13, but still, it was a great episode across the board. And to see the test and to see just what we had come to expect with Tower of God, Rack running around with a man in his arms just slashing and dicing, seeing Kuhn's amazing plan to lead characters and these creatures so... They wouldn't have to do the dirty work, introducing another member of his family that apparently he can't even touch, disabling cameras just for the fun of it. Like, there is so much happening, and you're thinking to yourself, man, this is like a good character arc. I can't wait to see what Kuhn's gonna do. What is Kuhn really traveling up the tower for? Like, if he's not going for this girl that he keeps thinking about and comparing himself with Bam and his connection with Rachel, if that's not what he's doing it for, what is he doing, and how is he going to go past the top of the family like what does he want to be does he want to be an administrator like what is he building up to there's so much just running through your mind as you're watching fun action funny moments and just heart punching situations where you're like these characters are going to die we're seeing a knock and, and Dorsey like they were getting bruised and broken it looked horrible and then you throw in Yuri who you're just thinking to yourself Yuri this girl I don't know what to think about her, but I love her addition. I really do, because she is a powerhouse, and I'm so thankful that she's not tagging along with them, because it would make every situation way too easy. And to see her pure authority and dominance, like, you know she's the dom in any relationship, because she literally was smacking this fool around, and this was a fool that was making us terrified and shitting our pants based on what he was doing to everyone else. And the fact that she can get these horrible monsters coming her way that made the other characters nearly die and she can just splatter them and there's blood everywhere and then you see the splattering of what happens with him later. It's like this is a character that is pure power and you want to see her character every so often. You don't want to see her tag along with the main journey because it would be way too easy. But it's interesting how supposedly he was collecting the swords for the father, the king. But she was like, no, I'll do it myself. And apparently this was this big act of betrayal. He was getting all hot and bothered because he's like, oh my god, I want to just hurt her because that's just his character. And to see how it all shattered around him, it was amazing. And just, it feels like you can't trust in Tower of God. Like, that's the thing that really has stood out to me, is that you can't trust. Even if it's your colleague, you don't trust him because 
in order for this tower to operate, it's survival of the fittest. And that's why when you look at Rachel, you kind of feel like Rachel and Bam are very interesting because Bam is the anti-tower. He's someone who can really disrupt the flow of the tower and was doing a great job at that. And then you have Rachel who was born into it and was basically doing exactly as the tower was teaching. It doesn't matter. This is your brother, your mother, your son, your lover, your best friend. It doesn't matter who it is. If you want to reach the tower, you will kill them. You will betray them. You'll do whatever it takes to get that power. And then there's Bam who wants to hold hands. They are complete opposites. They are contrasting to one another. And now who knows what they're going to look like the next time they meet because bam, it's a little different being left alone in a cave to being pushed off after you risk your life to save her and got her into passing the test. And that's impressive. This episode was incredibly impressive. And it's not just because it had a shocking cliffhanger. It's because the episode as a whole built up to that so elegantly as if you're thinking the reason people are excited for the episode 12 mark of Tower of God is because Yuri finally arrived. She's kicking ass, she's taking names, the swords are taken back. You get some setup with Kuhn's family and you're like, I don't know what he's building up to. You get some rat content. It feels like a good episode of Tower of God and you're like, yeah, of course. Like Yuri, that's gotta be the reason people were excited. And then the shove. It's not a stab, it's not that cliche moment that I thought it was going to be and I was gonna love it. I truly thought they were going to enter the next level and she'd turn around and stab Bam. That's what I was expecting. But the fact that it was a shove, it felt so much more powerful as if it's hopeful. It's like, we did it. We passed. Everything is good. It's bright and optimistic. And then they shove. That is such a good directing choice. The music, the fact that the credits were literally him sinking. And I'm like, this show is remarkable. And without a doubt, my favorite of this season. And I'm really glad we got one more episode because holy shit, could you imagine this being the cliffhanger for season two? Glad this is a 13 episode series because Tower of God hit it out of the park. There was only one thing they really needed to change and that was Bam's persona. And I'm glad Bam was like who he was up until this point because it provided for a really interesting contrast to the tower. But hopefully this is going to be his wake up call because I don't know how they could justify not changing his persona after literally being shoved off the platform unless they wanted to feel generic and Tower of God is anything other than generic. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Anime onlys, what did you think of that shocking cliffhanger? And for fans of the source material, how was the adaptation? Did it live up to your hype? Do let me know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like to show your support. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time everyone, please take care and have a good one.